Hi and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to perform forecasting for sales data in Tableau. Now Tableau has made it super easy and so simple to be able to do forecasting in Tableau without you having to do anything. You don't have to learn any statistical stuff. You don't really need to know much other than just like a few principles which I'm going to teach you in this video so stay tuned. So here we are looking at just a raw data table. So in order to do forecasting you do need two different things. You're going to need a dimension of discrete dates of just whatever the date that you want to use. So here we're using the order date and we're actually using the sales superstore. So you, if you want to follow along, you can use the simple uh, superstore data or you can go over to the website, click on the link and download the workbook yourself. Right here we're using the order date and I'm using the month and year and right here we have the sales. So that's all we're looking at and what we want to do is we want to forecast the sales out past the end so right now I have my data set starting at January 2017 and it goes all the way down to December 2020 so it's December 2020 and what I want to do is I just want to be able to look and predict out the next maybe 12 months of worth of my data or six months let's do six months here I want to look at the next six months so I can start doing my budgeting and my planning and everything for all my different departments and I just need to know exactly what my sales are going to look like so I can know what to expect. So the next tab we're going to go over to is our seasonality tab. So the first thing you want to do before you start getting into forecasting is kind of break everything out and take a look at the data and see exactly what's happening. And this line chart is the best way to do it. So I can look at it and I can see that, okay, wow, my sales do increase, you know, over time. So right here we have our different years already preset this is the latest year of 2020 I have 2019 right here in red so my sales are going up but not dramatically there is some seasonality so I notice that every single February my data drops off it drops off a little bit in April drops off again in August drops off again in October and it seems like it happens for just about every single year so now I know there's some seasonality now the important thing and the reason why you want to do this is because you can actually set some of the parameters for um doing this and looking at this allows you to look at the data and say all right is my data trending up exponentially is it almost like going in this like really linear manner in this case we can say no it's kind of you know not really flat but it's just trending normally there's there's nothing significant and our seasonal trends is it down here and then jumping up here in 2019 and then you know showing some different signs of you know the trend changing a lot no it drops here and it drops here but it's pretty much just relative to the fact that it was a good year or a bad year but these these dips right here aren't more dramatic than anything else if not it's actually getting better so those are two things that we want to take into account for a later portion of it so let's go ahead and build our trend line and you can easily build a trend line just by going to the analytics side and going right here to forecast. So as long as you have your order date up here or whatever your month year that you want to look at in this case in the sales, you can actually go right here and just drag in your forecast and it'll allow you to forecast out. So this is the default forecasting that Tableau gives you right here. Again, we have month sales and it takes the forecast and creates a color spectrum right here which we have our actuals which are the actual values that we have and then we have our estimates now I'm taking this all the way out to December and I'm gonna show you exactly what happened so if you want to get more tips in there you can go to forecast and you can go to describe forecast so now if you're on the actuarial team or you need to do forecasting or explain this in a presentation this gives you all the data so it tells you about the time series data uh, how many months that it's going to be looking at what's the date range um, no periods being ignored in this particular case and what the pattern cycle is so it tells you that it's looking at 12 month cycles and every single 12 months completes one cycle you have all your seasonality effects so it kind of puts the high and the lows in there all that fun stuff here you can go and get the actual stats from it so you can see you have your MASC in there and um, your screen error and it shows you exactly what the model is doing so it's doing additive 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 so this is really cool so this is one thing that you get to change as far as your parameters goes which we're going to change in the next tab and then take a look at it but you can see that it's pretty much an additive model and again when we went back to the seasonality there was nothing big moving when there's big movements constantly when sales are kind of moving exponentially that's when you want to look at mul multiplicative <laughs> uh, when you want to multiply pretty much the um, the average as it goes on but if it's just moving trending you just want to continue to add on to it so that's a great way to understand the difference between those two so 
here are the actual results that I finally uh, in, ended up inputting into there. So it went additive, additive, which again was a great option. But you can go to forecast options instead of describe forecast, and you can customize it. So again, here I went to go six months. Um, one quirky thing is you can see you have until and exactly. So if I click on exactly, it goes out one year. If I click on until, it only goes out six months. But if I go here, I change this over to months, and let's change this up to six. And let's change this over to months, my fault. As you can see, I have that, and look at that again, and you see it doesn't change. So I'm not sure what the difference between exactly and until is. It pretty much does the same thing. But just there for you in case you need to know. Tableau, maybe one day you can explain that to the rest of us. Um, aggregate, it's going to do default to months because right now I'm looking at every single month within a year. Tableau's smart enough and automatically figure that out, but you can go ahead and hard code it in there. Um, if you are missing days, which I am in this data set, then you just kind of get this like, I don't know what to do with this data kind of thing, so it's not worth it. Uh, just let Tableau. So, one option that you do have is the filling in missing values with zero so say you happen to be missing a month of data so say your business closed for coronavirus and you just didn't have any sales for that particular month for whatever reason it may be you can actually fill in that data with zero so when the data comes in it's just going to say null unless you have your system automatically put a zero and if your computer system or software doesn't put a zero in for that month or that day then tableau can actually go in there and just fill that in with zero so i think that's really helpful so in this case, we're not missing any days, so you don't see anything change on there. The next thing we have is our forecast model. So this is where Tableau uses its machine learning and predictive capabilities to help make this statistical model much better. So automatic is usually a free, uh, good way to do it. We do have some seasonality, so you can also change the model, say, hey, do this automatically, but don't take into account seasonality, and you kind of get this flat line. And now this flat line occurs many times when you pull into Tableau. So if you only have like one year's worth of data, Tableau really can't make a prediction off that in any strong manner. So you're going to have to go in there and kind of tweak some stuff if you just want some numbers. Highly recommend having at least three or four years worth of data in there so that you can pick up a solid trend. But as you can see, when you go to custom, the trend is set to none and the season set to none. So the trend is this entire graph here in the background. Like what is the trend? And then our season is just kind of are we having exponential bumps or not? So as we know, ta Tableau automatically went over to additive and additive, and that's how you can get pretty much the same chart that you saw over in the earlier one. And again, that all goes back to understanding seasonality and what's in there, but you can also do um, additive and you can say that, you know, hey, whenever the season comes, like it's just like jumping dramatically, like our sales are increasing so much during Christmas, so much during Valentine's, like, it's not really the same percentage jump every single year. It's not usually around 15% jump compared to our average. Like no, like one year is 15, the next year is 30, the following year is like 60%. Then that's when you would use a multiplicative, I'm not never gonna say that right, so. Uh, <laughs> model. One thing you cannot do is actually use a multiplicative, I'm not gonna say that right, an additive. So it says the calculation's too unstable. It's gonna give you this error. So just one of those things just to know. So on this case, I'm gonna leave it on additive, additive. I'm gonna leave my confidence interval at 80, but you can actually change this to any custom number you want. So if you want a 50, if you want a 10% confidence, I don't know why you would, but if you happen to want that, it's already there. Tableau has a preset the main three confidence intervals at 90, 95, and 99. So we'll put this at 95%. And you can choose whether you want to show it or not inside there, which is really good. Most of the times, you know, you do want to show the confidence intervals so people can know the high and lows. And then lastly, it just gives you a little bit of data about exactly what's inside the model. So again, if you need to explain this to somebody else, you can kind of go in here, get a lot of these details, and Tableau already has it built in there along with that Describe Data tab. And again, if you don't know how to get to Describe Data tab, you just go to Forecast, right-click, and hit describe forecast and you can go in there and you can get all the model stuff so that's stuff you can give your boss so i kind of just polished it up gave it a little bit of information here so you can see my actual cells what the precision is and the upper and lower bounds on here again for whoever needs to look at this going forward and that's all we have so that is forecasting in a nutshell and how you can forecast your sales data in tableau i do want you to stay tuned and we have some other video recommendations that you might love to see there and i'll see you next time